She's been featured in the New York Times, at the San Jose Improv, has performed in six different states. I had a whole written thing. <laughs> she served hot, brightly packaged, full of artificial preservatives. And there's a hot cream filling when you put her in your mouth. Welcome to the stage, Polly Pop Tart!
I want my partner's flaws is that they refuse to take out the trash. They refuse to take out the trash. Their mother came over for dinner the other night, was there for three hours, and he didn't ask her to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I shouldn't be too mad. I shouldn't be too mad at my mother-in-law. She kind of messed up. My partner's about it. They would have never settled for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, she's their own. Um, I'm here in the Bay Area and happy to be here. And I feel like in the Bay Area, people can really find out where they belong, which is like super special and amazing, right? Um, I realized recently that the place that I do not belong is the Fitness SF in downtown. <laughs> yeah, really hard to be the only person there without a tribal tattoo on my arm. <laughs> Didn't get that message. That, no, Brad, I don't want to go to your cryptocurrency conference. I don't. <laughs> don't. If I want to watch a whole bunch of guys jerking each other off, I go to Soma. Because <laughs> <laughs> the guys there are cute. <laughs> and they do less of So, how many people here have been to the Northern California coast? Like Pacifica, Half Moon Bay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, right? Northern <laughs> 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 people, rich people from San Francisco, buy the beachfront property, which I just don't understand. Like, what horrible ad did you think that, you think that was a good idea? Are you cold and miserable in San Francisco? <laughs> 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 Be cold and miserable, but on the beach! <laughs> yeah, I don't get it. I actually moved up to Portland about a year and a half ago, and I do love Portland. There's actually a lot of similarities between Portland and San Francisco. You know, people love the gluten free, free range, organic, all that stuff. But there's one main difference um, people in Oregon have less money and more opinions. <laughs> I live in Portland off of Powell Street, and Powell Street has a lot of strip clubs, a lot of strip clubs on Powell Street. So I'm driving down Powell Street, and I see a sign that says, gluten-free exotic dancers. <laughs> <laughs> My gut reaction in that moment was, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> I thought this was important to me, but gluten-free exotic dancers, totally a cause I could get behind. <laughs> Just think about it. There's always that moment, not always, I don't know how many of you know strip club, but there's definitely that moment where you see just a little bit of powder underneath their nose, and you're like, I know that that's not wheat flour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably coconut flour, right? <laughs> yeah, I learned recently that strippers these days, they don't do cocaine. They don't, they all do Adderall. Mm, prescription. <laughs> and I learned that from my lesbian stripper friend. Lesbians are the best. <laughs> so, how many people here have heard this thing called COVID? <laughs> yeah, it's real, real cutting edge stuff there right now. So, I realized that COVID really changes relationships. Um, a few months ago, my partner got COVID. Uh, a couple months, a couple weeks before I did. And when they got COVID, I was so supportive. I went out and got Tylenol, a thermometer, fluids. I canceled all of our social events, and I even slept downstairs on an air mattress so they could have a comfortable uh, bedroom upstairs for themselves. When I got COVID, very different. When I got COVID, the first thing my partner said to me was, does this mean I have to cancel my sexy photo shoot for today? <laughs> Which was so rude, right? Being selfish is my thing. <laughs> How dare you come for my gig in my own house? Anybody here on Instagram or any social media apps? Yes, okay. Um, one of the things that I really hate on social media is when hot, dumb people try to talk politics. Stay in your lane, Jordan. It's a very spacious lane, it's a very beautiful, there are a lot of gorgeous cars in that express lane. Why the hell do you want to be in crowded traffic with me and Erica? That was a good bit, we're keeping that out. <laughs> So there's also these things on Instagram called FOP. Stands for that hoe over there. Are you familiar with these people? Basically, they're literally taking news of themselves and cutting out just enough they don't get censored. And the thing about thoughts is like, love that. Like, you can take a sexy photo of yourself. Love that. Love that for me. Love that for you. Can you come up with some better captions? <laughs> there are just some captions that circulate time and time again. And there's one in particular that really 
grinds my gears. Thick thighs save lives. <laughs> oh, really? Thick thighs save lives? Stupid me. I thought doctors did that. <laughs> Can you imagine? I'm sorry, miss, but stage four cancer and a hematoma. Oh, gosh, doctor. What are my options? Is that some people with cancer talk? <laughs> well, miss, we've got, we've got two options. Your first option is that we go some very aggressive chemotherapy. If all goes well, we're going to hang off the deck for the rest of your life. Oh gosh, well, will it work? Well, there's decades and dozens of scientific peer-reviewed articles about this topic showing that this will work. Hmm. So what's my other, the other option that we have is over Instagram twerking running you for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, no way! Because after you realize you have, your cancer is done, you gotta become a valley girl and a TikTok star. That's like, that's the valley girl of today, apparently. Doctor, does this thick thigh that save lives, could it save my life? Well, we don't have a lot of data, but we've got a lot of comments on Instagram and Facebook. People have got lots of life from this. People love it! We also have some data on TikTok, but don't we have many years of data yet? We're still waiting on that. But does it cost a lot of money? Well, originally it costs nothing for thick thighs to save lives, but after you find yourself on their Instagram for a while, you might get bored and wanting more explicit content. You might end up wandering over to their OnlyFans. <laughs> OnlyFans, that sounds expensive. Not really, they're actually running a 30% off for of the subscribers right now. Yeah, only $7 a month. Unless you're reviewing that on your own. <laughs> Is a lie, but I know nothing because I'm not a doctor, right, Mom? <laughs> um, so my dad is a PhD, and my mom actually talked me out of uh, getting a doctorate at any point. So I'm sure she's very much regretting right now. <laughs> just a little bit. So I'm just saying they're both they're all very supportive. I mean, they're here, right? Uh, so <laughs> I love hearing myself talk. Clearly, I picked a really good thing to do on Friday. And I also love introducing other people or myself. Um, so I like to do a little bit of that for right now. We're gonna shift gears a little bit. This is a little bit of a call and answer piece. All right, are we ready? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Is she ready? Yes. My name is Polly Popra, I'm your regional drag intro comedian. I do drag queen intros. I've got a great cast that I can't wait to introduce, but I'm going to need your help. So when I say, oh, oh, you all say, is she ready? Let's give it a try. Oh, oh. Is she ready? Is she ready? You got an algebra, but she can always find her ex. <laughs> Put on the stage, carry the one. <laughs> Thank you so much. Carry the one is a real thing. She just likes the right angle. They <laughs> <laughs> have a work spray. Let's do another one. Oh well. Oh. Is she ready? She's your mom's sister. She's a very popular conspiracy theory course at the local community college. Welcome to the stage, Auntie Baxter. Oh. <laughs> and you left that one hope you're vaccinated. Another one. Oh, oh. Is, is she, she ready? ready? She's a New York queen, rocks a pretty box, smoky eye. Welcome to the stage, Nina Eleven Towers. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Nina Eleven Towers. Her performances don't always land. <laughs> <laughs> but I used to quite a comeback, quite a comeback. So, for my day job, I work for a genetics lab that focuses in women's reproductive health. Which I'm pretty sure makes me the most fertile drug queen alive. <laughs> You know what's so weird? I have never gotten my period. <laughs> Does that mean that I'm pregnant? Oh, I hope the dad's rich. <laughs> Whoever he is. So, working for a genetics lab, I learned a lot about genetic conditions. And for couples with genetic conditions, sperm donation can be a great option. Sperm donation can also be a great option if you just have an ugly husband. <laughs> and the gay community we call that an open relationship. Okay, hard crowd here. <laughs> but it's true, I mean, I feel bad for women with ugly husbands, I do. Because in general, I don't see it the other way around. Like, you're not gonna see some fat Walmart chopper named Janet rolling her electric wheelchair down a ramp to Brad Pitt's sex dungeon. Because <laughs> if you did, I'd be on Amazon buying those electric wheelchairs immediately. <laughs> oh, Al? Is she ready? She's ready. 
is designed to come exactly when you want it to. All over the stage, play with our pride! <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Glenn's on crime couldn't be here. She got arrested for tax evasion. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She got arrested for tax evasion. She got away with it. <laughs> so, sperm donation can be a great way to make money. Uh, men who donate their sperm can make about $100 per mission. And women who donate their eggs make about $20,000, making it the only industry where a woman gets paid more. <laughs> oh, Al. Is she ready? Her 401k is the child support check from her NBA baby daddy. Welcome to the stage, Tia and Amy. <laughs> <laughs> so working for a genetics lab and working with a lot of genetic conditions, I've also learned that women are generally having kids later in life. After age 35, women become what's called a high risk pregnancy, which is baffling to me because I grew up in suburban white trash America. I had no idea women got pregnant after high school. <laughs> And you know, sperm donation isn't for everybody. We will object from a religious standpoint. My Catholic grandmother always used to say, it is better for a seed to land in the belly of a whore than on the ground. <laughs> I have lived by these words. <laughs> oh, oh. Is she ready? Gay conversion therapy turned her from a top to a bottom. Look at the stage! Peaches Christ! <laughs> this a lot of thought about having kids. Uh, Semi-serious no, my company actually recently rolled out uh, discounts available to same-sex couples for uh, egg donors, surrogacy, and adoption, which is really exciting and got me thinking a lot more seriously about having kids. I also know that YouTube uh, suggested this video to me the other day that was 10 times predators ate the babies of other animals. I totally watched it, it was amazing, 10 out of 10. <laughs> and let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, in most of these videos, the predator is just waiting there for the moment that the parents take a water break or a cigarette break or whatever the animals do, and then they pounce. And I was a little bit nervous about doing this part of the set tonight because my sister is actually here and she's very pregnant for my sister. <laughs> A really just powerful moment to me for, for me and for her to be able to share that. And I was ugly crying in a restaurant downtown. It was a great connection. And often I don't feel something when I see other people's gifts, but when I heard about this, like the first thing that went through my mind, my heart, was I have to do whatever I can to protect this child. Like it's part of my family already, and I feel that. And through this experience, I realized. I don't feel that for other people's kids. <laughs> Your kid is crying behind me at the airport. I, well, I won't do anything there, but I might suggest that you take them to the zoo for their next birthday. Rawr! <laughs> yeah. So I mentioned earlier that I am Jewish. I am Jewish, I'm not a rabbi. I'm not a rabbi, I'm Jewish, but I do handle a lot of foreskin. <laughs> <laughs> and like a lot of Jewish men, I am circumcised myself, and I have no problem with guys of guys who are uncircumcised or uncut, I have no problem with it at all. In fact, when I'm with guys who are uncut, I always feel like I'm playing my, my forced in reparations. <laughs> I a debt that I am happy to pay. <laughs> and I gotta say, there's this thing in San Francisco Aquarius called Wholesome Street Fair. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, so it's a, it's a sex fair, sex street fair happening in San Francisco. It's people having sex on roofs and apartment buildings and all this. And it's a mainly queer event. I would say probably 60 to 70 percent of people there are queer. And of the remaining people who are straight or straight leading, about half of them are literally just there for the spectacle of them. And the other half are into it. <laughs> and like a lot of times these tech, I feel like it's like these tech executives who come in wearing a leather mask and just zipper over the belt, they're not just like half a leash in front of them. And like I feel like Josh Zuckerberg and Priscilla Chan are those people. Yeah. Allegedly, allegedly, of course. Yeah. And I love Wilson Street Fair. And like, there's always this this booth, and the booth is dedicated to people 
not circumcising their children. And like, love it, such a great cause. There's a lot of sex happening in the street. This is the best place for you to advertise. <laughs> Like, I don't have scientific data on this, but like, my spidey sense is telling me that most of the sexual activities that post the street fair are not resulting in children. <laughs> Maybe you should go somewhere else. <laughs> like, a high school prom, Chinese parking lot, a single picture at a synagogue, anywhere else. Uh oh. Is she yeah. ready? She's the first thing you're looking for. You need to go back to the club. Welcome to the stage is the uncut. <laughs> oh, we have another one. Oh, oh. Is she, she ready? ready? She's had trouble getting pregnant from wholesome and getting butt sex orgies. Bless her heart, she keeps trying. Welcome to the stage, Percy Sistens. <laughs> <laughs> so, as we wrap up today, I do want to mention that uh, my mother was very proud of me when I became a Nate Mitzvah when I was younger and was a little bit disappointed when I didn't continue on my Hebrew education. After the first kind of disappeared from that entire scene. Oh, oh. Is she, she ready? ready? She was here a moment ago and then poof! Sunrise, sunset, sunrise, sunset. Welcome to the stage, John Bonet Mitzvah! <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, her name is Polly Pop Tart, one L and two T's. Good afternoon, Mari!